today I'm going to start in Matthew, uh, chapter 12, verse 30 of the NIV version. And that says, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. That's Jesus saying that. Now in the NLT version, anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. And so I know this is kind of obvious. I mean, it sounds pretty basic, right? But it is not good to scatter away from Jesus. It's not good to be in opposition from him, and it's not good to work against him. So you may be wondering, well, how do we get to where we're with him so that we're not against him? Well, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Now it doesn't say, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with half of your heart. It says, we will find him when we seek him with our whole heart, because God wants our whole heart. So to not be scattered, we have to seek him and pursue him, and we've got to get down to business with God. Because sometimes when we don't pursue him, and we're just living in this worldly world full of worldly pleasures and desires, lukewarmness begins to creep in, and it sets in, and it is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Revelation 3.16 says, so because you were lukewarm, not hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Now the Bible uses a lot of figurative language, and this is one of those times. God doesn't literally want us to be on fire, like jumping in a campfire, getting third degree burns, and he also doesn't want us to be out in the Arctic, getting hypothermia and freezing to death, but he for sure doesn't want us to be lukewarm. So what is lukewarmness? Well, to me, it's like the word meh, you know, like it doesn't really matter one way or the other. You don't care, right? Lukewarmness is meh. But God is not meh about us. He loves us. And in fact, he loves us so much that he sent his one and only son down to this earth to die for us so that whenever we believe in him, we will have eternal life. And I don't know about you, but that does not sound like meh to me. So we shouldn't be lukewarm with him. You see, we have to be 100% with God to not be against him. We can't be 20% with God. We can't be 50%, 90%, even 99% because whenever we are not fully with him, then we are against him. But we don't have to be perfect, and that's the good thing. We just have to choose God. And we have to choose him every day. And so when we pursue him, we're not spit out. Right? Whenever we seek him, whenever we're with him, we're not against him, so we're not lukewarm. God doesn't like lukewarmness, and he knows that if we're not all for him, then we're against him. So you may be wondering what this stuff is. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration. So this jar equals God, and the water equals us. So I'm just going to put some water in the jar, and I'm try not to spill. So, this is what happens whenever we don't pursue God. Okay? He spits us out. Pretty simple. See, God wants 100%, like I said earlier. He wants all of us because he wants our whole heart. He loves us so much. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a scenario. Picture this. You're friends with someone. You love that friend so much that you constantly put effort into the relationship. And you're even willing to die for them. That's how much you love them. But your friend isn't thankful. They show you no gratitude whatsoever. And they do nothing to show you that they want any part of you in their life. Sometimes this is how I imagine God feels with us. Because oftentimes we don't pursue him, we don't seek him, we don't try to have a relationship with him, or do anything even remotely close. We're also not really pursuing him if our relationship is just for show. Because then it's not really a relationship. You see, if we just come to church to look cool or to hang out with friends or to please our parents, that's not really a relationship. Now, I know in the beginning, when you come to church, yeah, you're probably coming with your friends. Elijah invited me to church here, and that's why I started coming. But eventually, there has to be a turning point. Eventually, there has to be a point where you have to make a decision to get down to business and to get serious with your relationship with Jesus. And church should not be your relationship with Jesus either, because... You have to take accountability and responsibility for your relationship with God. Yeah. You have to fight for it. You have to want it, and you have to pursue, to pursue him. And you can't expect your pastor or the friend that invited you to do that. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Wait. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will say to them, he said, get away from me, you evildoers. Get away from me, you evildoers. You see, God knows our hearts. He knows when we're serious about him. He knows when we actually love him and what we're doing isn't just for show. He knows whenever we're not just trying to look cool, but deep down, we love him and we are putting effort into the relationship. God knows our hearts. First Chronicles 28, 9 says, For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. God knows what we're thinking, he knows what we're feeling, and he knows when we pursue him and we seek him. So now I'm going to move on to the second part of this little demonstration. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have the same jar. The jar still represents God. The water still represents us. But this time I'm just going to use this little piece of like raggedy fabric, and this is going to represent our pursuit of him. So I'm going to put some more water in the jar. So this is what happens when we only pursue him a little bit, you know, 50%, whatever, but not 100%. We're still poured out. We're still spat out. This is going to take a while to pour out, but it's <laughs> So although you pursue him a little bit, he will still spit you out. Because if you're not all for him, then you're against him. Deuteronomy 4 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. It doesn't say, love the Lord your God with some of your heart, some of your soul, and some of your strength. Because God wants all of us. He wants our whole heart. God doesn't want half of us. Remember Matthew 12, 30. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. We scatter when we only pursue him halfway. Because Jesus is an all or nothing kind of guy. He deserves it all, and he paid the price for us so that we could have eternal life. So we should want to give him our all as well. When we don't give Jesus our all, he knows. Just like that verse in 1 Chronicles, God seeks, or for the Lord searches all hearts. So this is kind of similar to the parable of the poor widow in Luke 21, 1 through 4. It says, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all of the others. All these people gave their gifts out of wealth, but out of poverty, she gave all she had to live on. So I know that's kind of usually used for tithing, but it's still applicable here because she gave Jesus her all. And so we may not have money, right? A lot of us don't have allowances and a lot of us don't have jobs, but we can give something else, our time and our commitment. Now, I know it's a sacrifice, but whenever you're an adult and you tithe, that's going to be a sacrifice too, a sacrifice of your finances. But right now, I know we're busy. Some of us may work, but we have high school. We have other um, commitments that we have, but we still have to make time to commit to God and to pursue God. We have to choose him every single day. There's no halfway with Jesus. And if we give all that we have, if we give our time, and if we give our commitment to God, we will be fulfilled and we'll find him in our pursuit. But what does pursuit look like? Well, to me, it's reading the Bible, seeking Jesus, learning more about him, reading his word. But I know it's hard. I know picking up the Bible is hard, and sometimes I struggle with it too. Sometimes I don't want to, and I'm too tired after I get home from school, or I just have lots of homework. But the thing about that is, in those moments where I'm most tempted to do something else and to not read the word, but I push through, I push through the temptation anyway, at least for me, that's whenever I find God the most. That's whenever he does the most in our lives. So it's important to push through and to pursue and still seek him, even whenever it seems like the worst moment in the world for us, because we're already so busy. Now, I have a question for you all. Who watches Netflix or Hulu? Raise your hands, yes. Or a movie or TV shows? Yeah, most of us, right? And if you don't, you're probably lying. But, <laughs> so most of us watch something. But here's the thing, 
I know there's documentaries, I know there's informational TV shows and movies, but even if we watch a lifetime of those shows, we will never gain more wisdom and knowledge than we will by just reading like one story in the Bible. Because the Bible helps us grow our spirit and our spiritual knowledge. It's different than what this world offers. So the Bible is it. It's our pathway to Jesus. It's learning more about him. And it's important to push through and read it even when you don't want to. Especially in today's times because there's so many people out there who are just spreading lies about the gospel. So you have to read it for yourself to know what's true. Because otherwise people are going to lie to you and you're not going to know what to believe. So I'm going to move on to the third part of this demonstration. So, as I said before, the jar is still God, the water is still us, and the red piece of fabric is still our pursuit of him. So I'm going to put that in the water. <laughs> so this time, this is going to demonstrate what it looks like when we go all in. Now, I know there was some drops around, but just focus on this, right? The water's still in there. <laughs> God doesn't spit us out whenever we go all in, whenever we pursue him, when we give him our 100%. He stays true to his word, and he says that when we are lukewarm, he'll spit us out. But when we pursue him, we'll find him in our pursuit. So, when you go all in with Jesus, you'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. When you go all in with God, you'll find him. But what do you do when you don't know how to pursue him? Some of you probably already read the Bible. You already do a devotional every day, or maybe you already go to church, or read the verse of the day, or whatever. So what more is there to do whenever you do those things and you still aren't finding God? Well, I don't have the best answer because I don't know how to explain that, but luckily, whenever Miss Rhonda was 16, she wrote this amazing poem, and I am going to read it for you. So it goes like this. Where is my beloved? Have you seen him anywhere? He's waiting in the garden, in the place of prayer. I travel down the mountain, into the valley low, to meet my precious Savior, whom I desire to behold. As I enter in the garden, I sense his presence near, desiring just to see him, his words I long to hear. But oh, where is my lover, the lover of my soul? My heart beats wildly within me, for it is he I long to know. But where should I go look for him? I'm not sure where I can start. The longer that I look for him, the more passion fills my heart. I look around the hedges to where he used to be, yet he is now no longer there. His face I cannot see. So I press on into the garden, past the birds and all the trees, looking all the while for where my love could be. I stop to smell the roses, to touch their vine and leaves which shortly takes my interest with all their intricacies. The aroma in the garden is near too sweet to bear. The sunbeams brightly shining in warm all the morning air. Why is my lover so hard to find now, when before it was an ease? Have I done something wrong, my lord? Have I done something to displease? Please show me, lord, where I should look. Please reveal your hiding place. For truly, I don't understand why I no longer see your face. I push on and on through the garden. My legs are growing weak, yet I will not be satisfied until I hear you speak. So onward I do persevere, my one true love to find, not to faint as in moments past, but to face the trial of time. Could it be that you are waiting, Lord, to see how far I'll go, to see how much I desire you, how much my love will grow? Lord, see the burning flames of love that are burning just for you, not longing for the world of pleasures, but only what is true. As evening came, I took a seat, fatigued from all my search. I suppose my love is sleeping now, staying rested in his perch. But, oh my Lord, how I will wait, for I have nowhere else to go. So no matter how long that it will take, it is you I want to know. For I have searched both high and low, and there's nothing I desire that compares to loving you, nor can quench this burning fire. My head drooped in exhaustion, my eyes
eyes began to close, when suddenly I heard a snap, a crack, and to my feet I rose. Come to me, my child, for I've been waiting just to see when I'd be all you're looking for when you'd be longing just for me. In excited jubilation, I ran to his embrace, and, and together we walked on from there, speaking secrets face to face. We laughed together and sang together and even danced a waltz, and never once did he bring up my life's mistakes or faults. Oh, the joy of knowing you, of being in your arms, I'll forever treasure you and protect your name from harm. For you are like a gentle breeze, yet ferocious like a lion. You are the blessed King of Kings, and you reign from on Mount Zion. So from this garden I will live my life, playing games of hide and seek. For every time you hide again, I climb another peak. Until one day we'll be so in love that the world will look and see that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. I love that poem so much. Ms. Rhonda did such a good job. <laughs> Um, but there's one part that I really love. Let me find it. I highlighted it somewhere. It says, Could it be that you are waiting, Lord, to see how far I'll go, to see how much I desire you, how much my love will grow? So could it be that maybe whenever we don't feel God doing what we're doing, he wants us to push deeper? Could it be that maybe he wants us to do more than just a devotional or read the verse of the day? Could it be that he wants us to continue growing in our relationship with him so that we can do the works that he has set out for us? We can't expect to keep on growing when we are doing the same exact things when we're standing at a standstill, because then we're not really growing, we're just staying right where we are. So when we're lacking and we're reading the Bible but not really feeling it, push deeper, because God will show up. Maybe God wants us to go further so that we can grow our faith in relationship with him. So I'm going to give an example real quick, um, my friendship with Ellie. So we started talking probably like a year and a half ago, and we started texting. And it was just occasional, right? Like we talked maybe every couple of days, and we were acquaintances. But now we're best friends. And so a bit, or in the beginning, we just kind of texted, and then we got classes together, and we started talking more like every day. And then we started hanging out after school, and then now we're where we are now. And so... <laughs> So we would not have been as good of friends if we didn't continue to grow and to pour into our friendship, if we didn't continue to hang out and to talk to each other. And it's important to do the same thing with God, because if we don't continue to pursue him, if we don't continue to seek him out, if we don't uh, continue to just seek his face and read his word and learn more about him and grow in our friendship, then we're not going to grow that relationship and be pursuing him like we need to be. So I'm going to leave you with one thing, and that is, we may not know what our relationship with God holds, but if we never pursue Him, if we never seek Him out, if we never go 100% with Him, we'll never find out.